What's up guys, James back here and today I have something new for you guys. I don't really do this, but recently I have participated in the Doubles OU Smoggin uh, Summer Seasonal Tournament and yeah, it's a really interesting format. I do like Doubles OU, similar to VGC 15, except you get access to all six of your mods. You bring all six instead of choosing four Pokemon. So I thought that was pretty cool. Decided to enter the tournament just for the fun of it and Heck, it makes some content because I get some doubles practice and I get to make videos for you guys. So, pluses all around. Plus, I could maybe win a bit a bit of money because I think there's like a cash prize. It's very small, but hey, I'll take what I can get. But anyway, today I'm my round one opponent. We have Flame Road who apparently was well known because when I asked people in the doubles OU room, the small game doubles room, uh, they said they knew him and I didn't know like what to expect but here we have round one and I decided to bring a pretty safe team the reason I say it's pretty safe is because this is the team I basically picked for the entire basically practiced the most with out of my entire VGC 2015 season uh, this is actually my world's team if you guys don't know uh, except I had polytoed over Landis but I decided Landis Barry and just because I needed something to do well against Azumarill, Jirachi, cores, And I decided that Politoed was actually the least brought member out of my world's team. And Landis Baron would just fit nicely because it gave me Intimidate. It gave me a really strong hitter to break the Jirachi Azumarill core. And it actually gave me a nice new play of Explosion paired with Mega Gengar. But we'll get that down to that eventually. I didn't know what kind of uh, team my opponent would bring. But I knew this is a pretty safe team because it does like disrupting opponent's strategies and this is what this team is basically made for. Um, when I first saw my opponent's team, I was a bit confused because this guy is decently known and I had no idea what to expect from this kind of looking team. I mean, uh, it looks like really annoying. You had Shadow Tag, Goth Tell, you had Whimsicott. Uh, Slowbro was the mega evolution of this team. None of his other Pokemon can Mega Ball. Deoxys defense is very bulky. Uh, you got Arcanine, which, you know, can provide well with Snarl, Morning Sun support. And then the Zoroark, which I really don't get on this team. But it looks like some kind of bulky defensive team. That's what I said. Uh, later, people would say it's PP stall, but I wasn't so sure about that. But anyway, going into this matchup, I fought... Okay, he doesn't have a rock resist, so I could probably lead Whimsicott to Rakion and just start going for the plus 6 beat up, which is really nice in Double OU. You can't do that in VGC. You can only do plus 4. And I thought I could just start off the battle by just going for the beat up. So I, he leads off with his Slowbro and Whimsicott, as I do lead off with my Whimsicott and my Terrakion here. And turn 1, I feel like just going for the beat up, but he actually reveals he is Focus Blast Slowbro. And he goes for the Giga Drain on my Whimsicott, breaking the Focus Sash, winning a potential speed tie. And then uh, I try to beat up the Terrakion, which fainted. So obviously, Slowbro cannot learn Focus Blast, and it cannot outspeed Terrakion. So that it indicates it is Zoroark out on the field, and Zoroark with a Choice Scarf, because you cannot outspeed Terrakion with the Slowbro. And I did check, I was level 100 Terrakion, I have made that mistake before. So I knew he was Scarf Terrakion, so he got a pretty huge lead because he uh, just got rid of my Sweeper. However, I feel pretty safe about my position here just because I could go into my Gengar. He can't really stay in and Focus Blast me, so he's pretty much forced to switch out. I can get a KO on the Whimsicott, and I get a free, uh, basically a free move with my Whimsicott. I really doubt this is support Whimsicott after seeing Giga Drain. So right here, I just decided to go for the Tailwind and the Sludge Bomb into Whimsicott. As he swaps out into his Arcanine as I go for the Mega Evolution and now his Arcanine is trapped. As I go for my free Tailwind and he ends up going for his Giga Drain onto my Gengar. Which doesn't do much at all and the Sludge Bomb is able to Oko that once got. So that is very nice as he decides to bring out his Slowbro right here. Now obviously this could be still Zorark because um... Slowbro is in the back. I did not want to exactly fall for a potential Shadow Ball into a Resisted and then get my Gengar knocked down in the process. Um, so I found a pretty safe play was just going for the Fake Tier Sludge Bomb. Slowbro doesn't exactly have the best defenses even if it is Slowbro. 
and Arcanine shouldn't be able to do much unless it carries like Flare Blitz or Flamethrower or something. But that wouldn't count my Gengar, so I felt pretty safe of just going for the fake tier Sludge Bomb into the Slowbro and hoping if it is actually Mega Slowbro right here, which I was really confident with Zorak that it would KO so that's what I decide to go for as I do go for the fake tears and the sludge bomb into the slow bro does turn out to be the Zorark and since it is choice scarf no focus sash it goes down as the Arcanine just reveals the snarl which is an interesting move to go for here instead of going for a KO on the Whimsicott or getting damage onto the Gengar as he brings out his Goth Patel and right here I'm in a pretty nice position because right here I feel pretty safe what I can do I could he knows I have fake tears and he probably knows that the Gengar carries Shadow Ball, so I could just go for the fake tier Shadow Ball into the Gothitelle. But Gothitelle is not really providing anything other than Shadow Tag, which is locking my Whimsicott and maybe a potential Trick Room, I guess. But I mean, when I have a potential to just fake tier Shadow Ball the Gothitelle, it's kind of suspicious not to do that. So the all around safe play for me is since Arcanines don't usually carry Protect. I would guess it'd be Will with Snarl, Morning Sun, and then probably a Fire type attack as his last one. I feel like Encore Disable is pretty safe, even if I lose my Gengar here. His Arcanine basically becomes useless, and he's forced to switch out the next turn, and I can bring out a heavy hitter such as my choice Banded Landers to do a lot of damage. So that's what I decide to go for. As he protects with Gopita, which is the best uh, scenario for me, as I am able to Encore and disable the Arcanine, and he is no longer able to use Snarl. And you know, he just protected right here. I can just go for the Encore and the Shadow Ball play into the uh, Gothitelle. And I do feel that is the best play. He reveals the Magic Coat right here. Encore gets bounced back, but of course, you can't Encore and Encore. As Shadow Ball does go into the Gothitelle, doing around half with his Citrus Berry, healing it up. And struggle, to, struggle does barely nothing to my Gengar. And Tailwind does peter out, but I could reset it at any time. And right here, I could probably just go for a fake tears shadow. But looks like his Gothitelle is basically trapped in right here. He'd be forced to switch out. Otherwise, he has to keep playing this Protect Magic Coat. And Arcanine's doing any not anything. It can't switch out. It just has to keep struggling. So I feel pretty safe about my position. I'm just going to keep attacking that Gothitelle. As he does go for the Protect once more. And I Encore and Shadow Ball into the Gothitelle. Once again, trying to get rid of it. As Arcanine can't do anything, he's just struggling right here. And at this point, I'm feeling like this Gothitelle basically knows it can't stay in. It can't do anything on the field, so I anticipate a switch out. And even if his Gothitelle did stay in, it would probably just go for Magic Coat. So anticipating that, I'm just going to get rid of the Arcanine since it's no longer Encore disabled. He can probably go for a Fire type move and knock out one of my Pokemon. So that's what I'm anticipating. As he does swap into Slowbro, as here I go for the Fake Tears and the Sludge Bomb right into the Arcanine, able to pick up the Knockout, and that is really nice for me, getting rid of that Arcanine right away. Scott Fatel is going to come out. Now, at this point, I feel like Scott is not doing anything on the field, so my best bet is probably just to get rid of the Slowbro right away, because this Scott is not doing anything at all. So that's what I decided to go for. I go for the fake tier Shadow Ball into the Slowbro, hoping to pick up the knockout even at minus one. But Mega Slowbro proved me it's bulk living at 5%. Gothitelle goes for the skill swap into Slowbro, and the Trick Room goes up. So that is a good play by my opponent because it gives him Shadow Attack, and he can swap out Slowbro uh, right now. He could switch out Slowbro into one of his other mods and keep that Trick Room up. So basically, that's what he could have done. But. I feel like just going for the Encore onto Slowbro is pretty safe because Gothitelle has revealed all four of its moves, Protect, Skill Swap, uh, Magic Coat, actually have we seen the last move? I do not remember. Protect, Magic Coat, Skill Swap, I'm anticipating Trick Room as its last move so basically the Slowbro is basically my priority right here so I'm just going to Encore, I see Magic Coats with the Gothitelle and I'm like I have no reason to target you as I don't know I thought that was a really confusing play. Actually, I shout out to Gothitelle because um, Encore into Slowbro makes it useless anyway, and he would reverse his Trick Room. So basically, if he stayed in Encore into the Slowbro, Trick Room would be reversed, and I get to damage the Gothitelle for free. And he forfeits. I don't know. That really was a confusing play. I really don't get why he stayed in and went for the Trick Room. But either way, I think I had the game either way. He was not doing anything. His team was just getting weakened, and I don't think he could have stalled me out of that. So we move on to game two. Game That was game one, and remember, we are allowed to switch up teams, so I wasn't sure my opponent was going to switch up his team. 
but I decided to go pretty safe in the next game. All right, so we have game two. Now, I didn't know if he wanted to bring in the same team, but I was just going to switch it up. I switched it up to my one of my favorite teams in Devils OU. It's a very offensive setup team. Uh, we have Kang, Volk, um, Jirachi, Azu with Genies, and this is my favorite team because it's basically set up one or set up another because basically the win condition of this team is set up one Pokemon and just sweep and even if your opponent is targeting that Mon, the other Mon can just set up and easily sweep. I think the only Mons that can actually sweep are Landers and Jirachi. But I have a Nasty Plot, Thunderous, a Belly Drum, a Zoomerill, a Quiver Dan, Volcarone, and a Power Punch, Kangaskhan. He brings the same Mons and, and I'm like, okay, that's great because setup basically destroys this team because it looks like he was playing a very defensive stall game, but Stall really can beat a setup. So basically, uh, he has a lot of mods weak to Volcarona. I don't see a Volcarona resist other than the Arcanine. Literally, he had, and I guess Whimsicott is uh, neutral, but then again, fire moves can just hit the Whimsicott. So I decided to leave just Kang, Kangaskhan Volcarona. It's very safe, but a very familiar lead I am with. As he leads his Arcanine and Slowbro against my Jirachi and my Volcarona. Oh, I, I let, I let Jirachi actually because I could follow me any, uh, potential like Scalds from the Slowbro. As he does Mega Ball turn one, and I just go for the follow me Quiver Dance. I don't care if he goes, goes for the Snarl because I can boost up my Volcarona right here, pretty safely. As uh, I can take his hit and stall out the Trick Room as he does go for that. As now he switches out his slow bro into his Deoxys as I go to Kangaskhan. Because I want to fake out onto his Arcanine and set up at least one uh, good uh, Quiver Dance. So right here, just going to go for the fake out to Arcanine. I don't know what Deoxys attack does, but it's not going to do much. But here I just decide, okay, Deoxys, I don't know what it does. I'm just going to go for damage on it and hope for the best. As he sets up a Cosmic Power. And I just go straight for the bug buzz. And now this was actually a really confusing part in the battle. Just because a lot of people were giving me hate. Because uh, we did have spectators in the shot. About me running bug buzz Volcarona. Apparently it's not common. Apparently Giga Drain is the common set. But reason I like bug buzz on this team is to hit specifically Ludicolo. Because I really do hate dealing with Ludicolo on this team. I also do hate the bulky mons like Cresselia that I have to deal with and bug buzz is pretty safe it's a nice stab move I don't get why it's hated or maybe just the people who are watching my battle hated it I don't know but yeah so basically here I can just go for another bug buzz I can go for like power punches into the Arcanine and actually no I go for the return and the bug buzz actually I think in order to get rid of that Deoxys because I didn't want it to start setting up. That Bug Buzz does a nice amount as he burns my Kangaskhan. Which is fine because, again, remember this team does appreciate uh, you, stop, you slowing down one Mon. Because basically it's going to set up with the other Mon or just do a bunch of damage in general. And the Burn Kangaskhan is fine because even though I'm not doing enough damage right away, I could just power a punch. And he doesn't have anything that can stop my power punches. As here, I'm just going to protect my Volcarona, stall on there, turn a Trick Room as he does try to Scald. And I am going to Power Punch my Arcanine. My King's Gun is actually uh, faster than his Arcanine Trick Room, which was interesting. As he does reveal Citrus Berry on his Arcanine and goes for the Snarl, not doing anything to my King's Gun. As the Trick Room does return to normal. And here, I feel like I could just go for a safe play and just pick up a Knockout right here. So I go for the Bug Buzz into the Deoxys. Which happens to be the Zorak. He sacks his Zorak, which is an interesting play. As the Flare of Blitz is going to go off into my Kangaskhan. Not do much, and the return is just going to go into the Archon. I just doubled it to Slowbro because I didn't want Trick Room to be set up one more time. I uh, Trick Room was going to be a bit annoying to deal with with this team. And uh, getting rid of Slowbro was really nice because I don't have to worry about, as I said, Trick Room or possible Calm Mind set sweeping me. But then again, I did have a Zoomer and Jirachi in the back just in case uh, that had to happen. So he sends out his Gothito and Slowbro. And right here, basically, I can just click Bug Buzz and return. There's nothing this guy can do. As uh, get rid of Slowbro, he goes for the Skill Swap, which is interesting. And Kangaskhan goes down, but the Landers combined with Volcarona. I do carry Knockoff on this Landers. As I can just Bug Buzz 
onto the Gothitelle and go for a knockoff into the Deoxys, which I thought would actually knock out the Deoxys, but apparently it doesn't. And he goes for the Nightshade into the Lander Send to take onto the Lander Send. That is game over because I can just Bug Buzz and a knockoff again for the KO. So, yeah, I really don't understand my opponent's team, but was able to come out on top against. I have no idea what this is. I honestly have no idea what uh, that team was. But I hope you guys enjoyed the content. And hopefully we'll get some stronger opponents in the later rounds. I don't think this team was exactly, you know, like, solid or strong. It's just a bit gimmicky, I guess. I'm not sure how PP stall works exactly. And how that is good in Double OU. Because you got so many things that could just instantly set up in this meta game. Azumarill is like a very common Pokemon um, that can easily just start sweeping. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, please leave a like down below. And yeah, be bringing you my future rounds. So see you guys then.